Hey everyone, hopefully you're killing it in the markets today. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's called Finding Value. If you like making money, lots and lots of money, uh, looking for the undervalued assets in the world, the most undervalued that there is, subscribe to the channel, I can help you do that. Give me a thumb up for this content. Uh, this content today is called Buying Dips. So let's say we correctly identify value, we, we get our market conditions right, what that means is that we should be accumulating assets and that any pullback in that asset that is favorable under those market conditions, we should be buying the dips, buying the pullbacks. We shouldn't be getting worried. We should be loading our portfolio accounts with companies that have good valuations that work well under these market conditions and we should be buying the heck out of the dips. So in this presentation, I'm gonna talk about buying the dips. So here we go. So if value and market conditions are good, so if value is good and the market conditions are ripe, we should be buying the dips. I've seen people comment about sectors lagging. For instance, gold. Those should be the sectors we are cost averaging into because they are the ones that have lost their lust. People are selling them. They're rotating money out of those sectors on a short-term cyclical basis. Maybe it be for, for the past couple months going into something else. Those are the ones that I'm interested in. It seems like the ones that people say are lagging, I'm the one ends up buying them. And you can see that in the hypothetical portfolio that I set up for this channel. If you're interested, uh, look for those videos. I've made a lot of money buying the out of favor precious metal in ratio investing. Ratio investing is basically buying the unloved out of favor metal and waiting for it to become into favor, and then you swap metals back and forth, increasing your ounces of holding quite dramatically uh, using precious metals, which means that you're outside of the market, you know, outside of the, the, the game, so to speak, outside of the paper game, increasing your ounces with all the safety net that precious metals brings. And in my opinion, that's how you make money. Sometimes I'm cost averaging into a sector or a commodity for one to two years or longer. So I, I cost average in, I accumulate assets when the value is cheap. That is how I make money. That's how I make purchasing power gains. So in my opinion, in order to do this, you're gonna have to divorce yourself. And what I mean by that is you gotta divorce yourself from your emotions. Oftentimes you'll be buying assets when your emotions are telling you not to because you're not used to it as a new investor. And when you become an experienced investor, you're going to have to really divorce, divorce yourself from emotions. And it'll be very easy once you do so. Become less human for better gains is what I call it. I know that sounds not humane, but that's, that's what it is. Uh, new investors like seeing gains immediately. Seasoned investors buy value that is down and they cost average in. And you might be cost averaging in for many years. And the market may move against you, but guess what? You know that the value is cheap and you continue to pile into the undervalued sectors. You should be getting excited when assets go on sale, not necessarily when they go up. I was extremely excited to buy SM Energy at $1.50. And I'm not trying to brag or, or, or anything. I just never seen a company that's been that cheap. It's $1.50 from an $86 high. And it was being driven into the ground. And I was like, man, this is cheap. I, I, I got it. I, I was so excited. I could barely even sleep at night because of the valuations were so cheap in all, all these assets that I was buying at the bottom or close to the bottom. It wasn't the bottom of the bottom, but it was very close. Diversify among sectors, in my opinion. The emotional side of, of you wanting to see gains all the time, uh, it, it, if you don't diversify, it's, it's, a, it's a very Jekyll Hyde uh, feeling. Some days you get absolutely, it's very big down days, very big up days. So my opinion is diversify your portfolio uh, across some of these sectors. And some may go up, some may go down, some may lag, some may lead. And they 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 may uh, change your, your, your leaders and laggers over time. So it kind of, it, it, it steadies the portfolio, the, the ups and the downs. It really starts to study it out. And I think it's much easier to invest when your portfolio is steadier and you can continue to deploy money to the undervalued sectors. It just makes it easier emotionally, for most people at least. Uh, you're always going to have some bad days where everything gets whacked. It, you're never going to avoid that. But you know the whole market sells off, 
Sometimes it happens, but you got to be ready for it. But most of the time, it really steadies the portfolio out, diversifying amongst uh, a bunch of sectors. I spread out my money into companies to capture gains, reduce risk, and even out the portfolio. But it's really to capture the gains because I don't know what the best companies in the best sectors are necessarily going to be in this next bull market. It could be tin, it could be nickel, it could be copper, it could be silver. I'm not exactly sure, but guess what? I'm going to capture all of the best companies in all of the best sectors that I know of to capture those gains. And earnings and guidance. I'm just, I want to do a quick thing on here because I know we're going through this right now. If you feel like this company must have good earnings or guidance, you're probably too overweight in that company. And you should be spreading it out where if you get hit hard during an earnings uh, or guidance call, it's not going to really affect you emotionally. Your portfolio should be able to take on volatility easily and not worry about earnings or earnings calls or short-term news. Get to a point where you want pullbacks to buy cheaper shares. You should be excited and can't miss the pullback. That's how your mindset should be. It shouldn't be, great, uh, I'm up 20% or, oh my gosh, I, I should sell all this because we're down 20, 30%. You should be like, man, this company's good. I know this sector's cheap. I know the value's here. I got to buy more. If I see a 20, 30% pullback, I'm loading up. That's the mindset you got to have. And I, I kind of, this is what, what I call it. I call it an investor program download into you. So you need to do download the investor program. Erase your default program in your brain and, and hope for pullbacks and cheaper shares. That's what we want. We want to look at this as a win-win. Pullbacks, you win to buy cheaper shares. Leg ups in price means your portfolio shows those gains. That's a win and that's a win. You win either way. You win that you buy cheaper shares. You win that your portfolio goes up. That's my mindset. Watch what I do in my hypothetical portfolio for the channel and when I'm adding companies on pullbacks uh, or whatnot, when they go down. That is where you could potentially learn some uh, and what my mindset might be because I've kind of downloaded that investor program and I've changed my paradigm to find value instead of looking at price. And again, in order to be a successful investor, I think you have to have a time frame set. So set a time frame for your investments. Mine is the next commodity bull market, that length. We want to cost average into cheap assets. Don't expect quick returns. When these assets get cheaper and cheaper, if they do pull back, if, because they've been going up quite a bit, that's when you want to keep cost averaging in. You want to buy them when they're cheap. I'm investing for the five to 15 plus year viewpoint. That's my viewpoint. And that's what I think the commodity bull market duration might be. We want to accumulate undervalued assets and not worry about the day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month returns. And, and quite honestly, when I look at a lot of billionaires, this is how they invest. So I consider this, and the information I'm telling you is, is basically invest like a billionaire would invest. You accumulate assets on the cheap, and then you wait for that money rotation to happen. So the conclusion here in this, in this presentation is be an investor and buy value. Buy the pullbacks if the market conditions are ripe and the value is good. Buy out of favor metal or sectors. Buy them when they're down. Don't, don't go chasing price. If, if something goes up 100%, don't chase it. Go look for something that's been down and kicked in the dirt and where that money kind of was drawn from. Buy before vertical price movements happen. Don't buy them and, and be at the top of a vertical price movement. Reprogram yourself to be an investor with less emotions. So that's what I have for this presentation today. Uh, Again, I, I see value. I can't chase price. It's not in me anymore. I, that's been beat out of me. Uh, I did that when I was a new investor. Now I, I can sit and I'm very patient. I look at things. If I'm down 30, 40, 50%, I've been down easily 50% in a, in a position. I buy more. <laughs> I just buy more. I don't know what I'm programmed now. It's like, oh, it's down. I got cheaper shares. Buy more. Double down, triple down, quadruple down. It depends on the company and the sector. I'm not telling you to go triple down in a bankrupt company. <laughs> you got to get, you got to do enough homework where the fundamentals are good enough that you don't think it's going to go bankrupt. But some of these, some of these opportunities you accumulate when it's cheap. And what makes this very easy with precious metals, physical precious metals, is that you have no bankruptcy to worry about. You just buy it when it's super cheap and you can just continue to cost average in and you don't really have to worry about the technical analysis as much because it's, it's very easy to make money. You just, Hey, this, this ratio is extremely cheap. Like platinum's been cheap the past year in 2020. 
I just kept buying it. Buy, 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 buy. It's not going to go bankrupt. You have nothing to worry about with respect to that aspect of it. So physical precious metals is super easy to make a bunch of money in because you have no risk with management, no risk with government and taxes and all that other stuff. So I, I'm a big proponent in physical precious metals. It's 33% of my total portfolio. At least that's what I'm working up to. It's probably around 20 or 25% right now. But I, I do whatever's low risk. Low risk, high return. I just hit that button all day. Uh, so buy value, don't chase price, and buy the out of favored sectors. That's what the ratios tell us. That's what's worked for me in my history. Uh, and if you can get the market conditions right, it you, you can just absolutely kill it as an investor. If you if this interests you guys, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the for the content, leave comments below on what you think you need to work on as an investor. Let me know what that is, and maybe I can set up some in, some presentations to address your weaknesses. Thanks for listening. This is finding value.